Welcome back to Wrenching with Grandpa, and well, we're looking for Grandpa right now. Well, hey, Jerry. Glad you made it. Hey, everybody, look. Tonight, uh, Jerry's come by. He's brought all the big boy toys, and we're getting ready to go in here and uh, hopefully not burn down the shop. I doubt that we will, but we're going to get this suspension, these cameras, fixed up so we can start putting this thing back together finally all right let's go all right so jerry's come over guys east wood got everything kind of plimmed out here and we got wires and cables and everything going everywhere. Yeah, we're gonna TIG weld this thing up. This is gonna be really cool, guys. And uh, we pre-tested, so hopefully my old house uh, will have Dolby amps. <laughs> now, obviously, the crap has to be done. What we did there just had to make a good solid ground. What's about to come next? Right. Looking up the dragon. <clears throat> Find me a place over here in the uh, box seat. Just light in a good place for you. You need yeah. to reposition. It's in a great spot. Somebody bring me some popcorn. This is gonna be great. Oh, we got the argon. We got the TIG welder. Pure argon. And TIG welder. oh my God, Grandpa's in a Darth Vader outfit here. I can't see anything. I hope you guys can. <laughs> it's been so long since I wore one of these. I have no clue. All right. Uh, hopefully, we don't burn something down on the camera. Uh, uh, what the hell? Yeah. All right, this well. is where one of those automatic uh, dimming. Yeah, those are cool. Those are you know, handy, if, huh? if, 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 when you teach me how to do this, I'll have to get one of those.
to bend this so we don't paint too much. I'm going to uh, try to avoid that and rip it off. little lights on the, on the power when we initially started out so it looks a little cold back there the cold I mean you know 2,000 degrees <laughs> maybe not quite that hot but. well hey you didn't set nothing on fire so that's always a good thing yeah Argon does a really good job of preventing that from happening. Well, we're always the first it's thing. non flammable. That's the important part. Well, I know that crack is no longer there. Yay, team! One crack down. All right. So, now, we're going to try to quickly regroup and uh, hit the other side, right, my friend? Oops, earthquake. Probably a super fun in the summer. <laughs> I 
Yeah, this doesn't have anything that we need to be worried about. Really? Yeah. Really? Yay! Cool. That's great. So, so we, I can start putting this bad girl back together. Yeah, we don't have to worry about burning the house down anymore. Well, not right now, you know. I've still got more things to do. <laughs> There's always that opportunity, you know that as well as I do. Oh yeah. So, especially when we get it over to the to the shop and we can start building uh, the exhaust. Yeah, the exhaust is okay. So, here's what I'm thinking: two and a half inch, uh, Magnaflow. What are your thoughts? You know, it it would be nice if you could, you know, dial something in on the computer and say, okay, this is what I got. I got 318, blah, blah, blah. I want to do this. So, you know, this is what well, I want. There's too many different cam profiles to actually be able to do something like that because every cam is going to sound different with every exhaust. Well, exactly, but that's what I'm saying. If you could dial in, okay, I got a stock 318, two barrel, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I think to give this thing a little bit more of its muscular sound, I think it would be good with the two and a half inch into a, into a flow masters. Well, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Some new super forties and, and uh, you know, the four barrel setup is still on the table. Uh, I did run across one the other day but I just wasn't comfortable with the deal for the price they wanted the condition of the of the equipment and shipping because it was like hmm, on the other side of the world not in China but uh, probably gonna end up and Jerry and I'll probably end up down at, Mc, down at Summit we'll get us a nice aluminum intake and a carburetor i'm not gonna say what kind of carburetor not well period correct it would be but we're always open to suggestions right i grew up with holly and right, i had i had great success with my hollies and so i'm thinking what do you think uh 600 cfm I would think so. So, you know, but we've also got tires and wheels to consider. And I've been doing some shopping on that. Have you been thinking about doing the uh, <clears throat> camshaft? Not right now. We still have not evaluated this engine. We get it out to your place. We've got to do a compression test and find out if we've got to do any internals before we start talking about upgrades. You know? Because who knows? If the 318 is not up to the chore, we got to find a, well, we don't have to find. You already got one sitting on the floor in the shop. Well, we got, we, we got access to something else. But no, I, you and I both know this little girl's got a strong engine in her. If anything else, at some point, and right now we're not trying to go out and, you know, do any crazy high performance stuff with her, but maybe at some point, you know, uh, we could bore out, put some new rings, maybe do a little, uh, you know, 10 to 30 overbore on her, put some horse pistons in her, maybe drop a cam in her, or for the same price, we could maybe go a 340 stroker. Your thoughts? I say let's go 360. Yeah. They're a little more plentiful. Not a bad idea. And they're about the same price because of the 340s and oh, some 340s of the... 340s are scarce now. Yeah, they're getting that way for sure. So most folks that have most folks that have one aren't going to get rid of them. And you can find 360s pretty quick. So. Or we could do something totally radical if I get a rich girlfriend. Uh, we could go out and buy, you know, a salvage uh, Hellcat 
and dropped the rear end and the whole powertrain in her. Of course, we'll probably have to bring this back out to do a little more suspension uh, a reinforcement. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have the budget to turn her into Hemi Under Glass 2. God, wouldn't that be a build? I mean, putting the Hemi in it would be rather fun. It would be. I mean, we could just do a regular 5.7 Hemi. Yeah. And we could probably pick one of those up out of a wrecked uh, Ram. Or Challenger, Charger. Yeah, well, if, if it's coming out of, out of any of the cars, you're going to pay more for it than if it comes out of a truck. And it's the same engine. Pretty much, yeah. Something to think about. But not right now, because we still got... To get. Well, we need some sponsorship for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Summit, racing, uh, anybody out there, you know, any kind of major retailers, automotive parts Summit, stores. Jags, Mopar. Mopar, Jags, uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, pretty neat. Wouldn't it, though? Wouldn't it, though? Listen, guys, uh, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, there will be some more coming along because now that this is done, we can start putting all the shiny new parts on her. We've got to uh, replace the tie rods. Uh, we've got the torsion bar uh, bushings to replace. And uh, we got to start putting all the brake system back together, all the shiny new plumbing over there and there's something I found out with this uh, conversion to the master uh, dual cylinder and the placement of the lines down along the frame. We, I've got to come up with a new placement for the split block because the original single cylinder split block is too close to the exhaust system. Let's, let's open the hood and see what it's talking about. <laughs> Find it. These youngins. Ah, there you go. You found it. Okay. All right. And uh, see, if you get down in here, these lines come down and feed down that direction. Well when you get them down to where you've got a place to attach them to your splitter box, which is an upgrade from the original, they're like way too close to, in my opinion, to the exhaust manifold. They need to be, I, we need to modify the brake lines a little bit, stretch them out, which isn't a big deal, but they need to be brought Oh, further away from this manifold setup. In my humble opinion, uh, I don't need overheated brake uh, fluid. That's not a good thing for anything. I think, honestly, I think that's a pretty good amount. We could definitely wrap. We can put some heat shield on it, and I'm not opposed to that. I think we could probably get away with doing like uh, a wrap on the exhaust itself. Um, well, and that's a, that's a, a heat wrap around the pipe. Yeah, and that's one thing. If we, you know, uh, get the manifolds and what's left of the three foot of the old exhaust system off of it, we can go in there and put some heat shield in there. In any case, we've got a heat issue that's got to be addressed down there and, you know, yeah. for me to I feel think, good about it. I think that's, I mean, we could definitely put like a, a little aluminum plate, if you will, right in that area. Oh, yeah, um, I've I got think you. it's, I think I've, it's far I've, enough away so it's not directly next to that pipe. There's enough airflow to keep that cool. Yeah. But, hey, I, I've got some Texas state license plates up here in the bin that we could make heat shields out of. Yeah. 
would seem appropriate. When you're in Texas in the summer, you're basically in hell as hot as it gets. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. All right. Well, uh, we're getting there. You think she'll start? I would hope so. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you hold on to the camera and let me uh, put some juice in her because she hasn't been juiced lately. That's something, uh, I would like to keep the mechanical fuel pump, but obviously yeah. when she sits here for weeks at a time, she's going to bleed off. But uh, I don't know if a new fuel pump would eradicate that situation or not. Probably yeah. not. I mean, she works fine when I run her. It's just she's never getting any run time. something presentable for the public. We're still waiting for the soft ice cream machine. But, you know. Well, let's put a little bit of lawn more juice in here. Now, here I am leaning over the fender on this thing with no fender covers. And I think that's enough. I raised hell with friend of mine the other day on his channel for doing the same thing. But you know what? He was leaning over chain of spark plugs on a 40 Chevy Coupe retro mod. Brandy. <laughs> really? Alright, well let's see if this thing will even spark over. It's got an interesting battery in it. Uh, it'll only be good forever, right? That's what they say. some fuel on her. She's out of fuel. And I've been running this crap A7 just to get her run. Gonna be putting some no, uh, some leaded fuel with octane boost in her. But yeah, I mean, she still sounds pretty solid. But we're getting there. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us this evening. Thanks for Jerry, my wingman, my best friend coming out tonight and getting us set up here so we can move forward. And, uh, oh, gosh. My turn signals work too. <laughs> <laughs> Golly gosh, the excitement never ends. Hey everybody, you all have a great week coming up. Please subscribe if you're not. Share. Comments are always welcome. Power tours coming up. Got a lot of stuff. Hopefully they'll be in the next upcoming. You guys take care. We got a lot more to do here. We got stuff out of Jerry's house to do. We got Camaros. We've got my Tahoe. We got all kinds of stuff coming up. We got summer. square bodies. Oh my God. We've, we've got to get that 408 done. Anyway, you guys have a great day. We'll see you soon. Bye bye.